Hello everybody, and welcome to my talk on steampunk airships. Normally, of course, I'll be giving this talk at the asylum, but of course not possible this year due to obvious circumstances. The talk I'm giving this year will be a repeat of one I gave a few years ago with my thoughts on designing steampunk airships. Of course, as a matter of fiction, there are, there are an almost infinite number of variables to contend with. In order to tackle this in the brief time that we have, I'm going to talk a bit about some useful design principles before narrowing down the discussion to the design of a typical steampunk airship, if such a thing exists. As a naval architect, my, my viewpoint is very much from the perspective of a ship designer, but these principles work whether you use shipping, aviation, or something else entirely as a starting point in your designs. Now, the scariest thing, and also the most exciting thing in the design process, is a blank piece of paper. Each step gets progressively easier once you start to fill in the blanks, but starting is always the hardest thing. So, to start, the first thing you need to do with any design is, is to set out your basic requirements. Usually, the very first thing you need to decide is exactly what sort of ship is needed. With steampunk, there's an additional pair of points you need to make a decision on first. The world in which your fiction is set, and when. For where, it's a question of how far you can push the laws of physics. At one end of the scale, you have the hard scientific. Alternate history, perhaps, but the laws of physics apply as we know them. At the other, you have high fantasy. Problems of science are brushed away and explained, usually literally by magic, or by technology so advanced and mysterious that they may as well be magic. Now, additionally, steampunk in its various forms covers a wide range of historical periods. Loosely from the Regency era, powder punk, through to the late 1940s, diesel punk. This is about going even further into things like post apocalypse steampunk or steam fantasy, atom punk, and that sort of thing. Of course, you can mix the different eras together, but broadly, you can plot these requirements together to give a sort of compass. So your first step in my mind is locating or deciding where you are on this, for your ship in the world in which it is set. Now personally, I tend towards low fantasy. You can bend the laws of physics a little bit, but the designs still tend to be fairly realistic. The next and critical step is to select roughly what sort of ship your airship is going to be. What role it was designed or modified for to fill, this will be heavily influenced by the time period and the sort of background your ship comes from. Now personally, I always draw an historical naval architecture with my ships, regarding them very much the developments of surface going ships. You might, as an example, take inspiration from historical aviation instead. So your airship might be classed as a bomber, transport, etc., rather than a, I don't know, a frigate or destroyer. Now, coming from a surface ship's background, this gives you a ready choice of ship class or type. For example, I could say my vessel is going to be a warship, and it's going to be a corvette. So immediately then, I know from, from that context, it's going to be quite a small vessel relative to other warships, quite lightly armed and armoured with an emphasis on speed. I can look at historical examples of corvettes and choose design elements from them. So for a vessel of, say, 1860 to 1870, that could be a combination of steam engines and sails for propulsion, a small number of heavier guns for armament, and plenty of polished brass work. Now that, of course, gives you a very strong starting point. Next comes the detail. You can pull design elements from pretty much anywhere. Historical aviation is a very obvious choice and perhaps almost essential for designing airships, along with architecture, think wrought iron, that sort of thing, fictional spaceships, steam trains, and even nature. It's usually best for unique design to mix several elements together. Although with steampunk, it is usually best to keep an emphasis on historical styles to get something broad in keeping with the general sort of steampunk aesthetic. It's worth noting that when you design like this, it's up to you how much of each element you use. And don't forget that you can play around with each of them. You haven't got to copy the existing designs exactly. Push and pull the shapes, put them into different arrangements, and generally muck around with them until you have something you like. Now, of course, I started my examples with an 1860s warship, and that's not what we're designing. Although that can, approach can work as well. So, you're going to need other design elements. A clear choice for lift is the usual airship envelope, aka a gas bag. So now I start combining my 1860s warship with a 1930s rigid airship, like the Graf Zeppelin, and so on and so forth, until I have a suitable design. How much you take from each source element is up to you. On this basis, you could end up either with a literal flying ship, or a more subtle combination between the two. It does help, though, to pull the strongest and most dominant elements from the point of time at which your ship is set. The sparse use of more modern or older elements is, is more striking from a fictional standpoint. As an example, having an airship with a strong mid-Victorian sort of feel and background look at the laser cannon is quite striking from a fiction standpoint and can say quite a lot about the world in which it is set. A good reason with steampunk for starting like this is the origin of the genre itself. Steampunk, of course, draws very, very heavily on historical designs, so that's the whole point. And the general aesthetic is to some extent more firmly set than other sci-fi fantasy genres. My advice to those starting out is to start with the above process and slowly bring in more unique features, or features from additional sources, as the design progresses. This comes back to the idea of the design spiral. Start off with a basic idea and keep going back and refining it until you end up with a finished design that you like. Now one very key thing to highlight is suspension and disbelief. Unless you very carefully produce a hard science design, the chances are your airship wouldn't actually be able to get off the ground in reality, and that's true of almost all of my designs as well. The trick then is to give your ship the appearance of being airworthy. Failure to do this will make it very difficult to sell the design to your audience. 
It's quite a hard thing to quantify, but my advice here is to look at real aircraft and try and keep to their general proportions. One thing you notice very often on steampunk airship designs is the gondola, that's like the crew car underneath, tends to be absolutely massive compared to the rest of the ship. If you look at real airships, that doesn't tend to be the case. So that covers the very basics. So let's go and have a look at a specific design. The first one we're going to take a look at was developed for a short film, um, so it was generated as a full 3D model. Uh, so quite a lot of detail and planning is required. The best in question is MV Stormpetrel, which is now sort of the mascot ship of our group we have going at the moment. The first step was the brief. We knew that the vessel was required to be a pirate ship, and that the general setting of the dark and gritty low fantasy world, set towards the end of the 19th century. I knew from this that the ship would have to have a weather and news look, and that I could twist the laws of physics a little bit with the design of the low fantasy part. Now when it comes to pirate ships, no vessel was built explicitly as a pirate ship during what's called the Golden Age of Piracy, which was the late 17th to early 18th century. So to further complicate things, I needed to decide what sort of ship it had been before it was adapted into a pirate ship. In the event, I chose a late 19th century steam whaler as a starting point. This is a smallish steam powered affair sent out from a whale oil factory ship to harpoon whales. From the off that gives it a very gritty edge um, as the industry is somewhat frowned upon these days. It also implies that the vessel would be battered, having been operated in rough seas and skies for months at a time. It also gave me a relative size, fairly small compared to other ships in our universe. Now although the choice of whale boat worked well thematically, it didn't work so well for me aesthetically. I didn't want a flying ship, I wanted a variation of a more traditional airship. So the very basic form is from a fairly traditional blimp, with a large envelope filled with lifting gas and a gondola slung underneath. Now, importantly, I wanted the vessel to be independent. In our world, the steam engine is rapidly taking over, but long distance craft still require sail to cruise for extended periods, as it was up until the mid to late 19th century. I decided to give her a basic sailing rig for this purpose. Of course, this is a fantasy element, and fortunately sails don't actually work on airships due to the lack of keel. On a real world sailing vessel, you have a keel sticking to the water beneath, which gives you the resistive force you need to sail into the wind. On an airship, that doesn't work, but it looks cool, so I tend to use it quite a lot on my designs. So with our basic elements, we can start to put a design together. Once you have something on the page, or just in your head, it helps to start sketching. As you draw new sketches, or, or develop existing ones, you'll slowly fill in the blanks and refine details until you're happy. Now as you can see here, from our basic concept, we now have a much more refined design. The envelope has been fed into a shark-like shape to give it that sort of uh, aggressive uh, pirate ship look. The rig has been refined, and the engines and fine details are being selected. You can even see a few details carried over from the whaling boat, a crow's nest and a harpoon, as well as modifications made by the pirates. It's up to you how fine you go with regards to detail. For a book, a rough sort of textured outline might be enough, but for artwork or a model, of course, you'd go really go to the fine detail. My advice to that, as before, is to find relevant sources. For example, you can see here that the gondola is riveted together from iron plates, which is a marine practice, and it gives it that tie back again to the, the maritime well. The key thing when it comes to adding detail is function. Your details should look like they serve some purpose on the ship, rather than just being there to look good. Pretty much the final thing you'll be thinking of once you have your design down is colour. You may, as a steampunk airship, uh, think that you're limited using sort of the classic browns, brass colours, greys, etc. as your major colours. However, this is not the case. For a start, the Victorian era wasn't all brown and grey, as you often think of it. People wore bright coloured clothes. Warships, as another example, were very often painted in shades of white and buffs, much brighter than you might think. All I can advise here is research. Look at the colours and styles of the times, and don't be afraid to break outside the typical steampunk palette. As a closing point, I'd like to point out the value of consistency in your designs. Steampunk is a science fiction genre, on the whole. If you want an interesting design, chances are you're going to break the laws of physics somewhere. One of the best ways to, ma to maintain suspension of disbelief is to be consistent. Absolutely create altered laws of physics in your world, but once you've got them, stick with them. It'll give your design strengths and weaknesses and three dimensionality that'll be lacking if you just use magic and how maybe to explain everything away. So to recap, the main thing is to research the subject, choose the topics that interest you for the strongest design elements, and keep, your keep revising your design until you have something that you're happy with. Now, thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the content that's been put up for the uh, Sanctuary Online Festival.